Hey, how are you? Pretty good. Just making sure you were good to go. Can you hear me okay? Yep, I can hear you. I can see your presentation. Got some music playing in the background. That's cool too. Yeah, I figured I'd have that so that uh, when people came in, it just wouldn't be, uh, you know, they'd, they'd actually hear something. So, uh, no, that's really awesome. I really wanted to do that throughout. Um, the conference today, but it's just been crazy managing it all. So I was just I like, understand. you know, go with that music today. <laughs> I, I, I trust me, I understand. <laughs> awesome. So cool. I was just checking in. I got to check on the other groups real quick. So if you're good, okay. we're good. Okay. Well, I just want to make sure that everything was okay. I appreciate you. Yep. No problem. All right. All right thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Welcome, Deborah. We're going to get started here in just a few moments. And um, that way, we'll uh, just want to give people a chance to come into the room. Hope you're doing well today. Great. Yeah, we're just going to give just folks just a few minutes. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, so we'll get started here in just a few moments. We're going to give it just another minute uh, to let just a few more folks come in here, but I don't want to wait too long because I want to respect everybody's time. So just another another 60 seconds or so, and we'll go ahead and get started. Hello, uh, everyone. Again, my name is Terry Armstrong, and uh, I, for Making Startup Week, uh, I am doing the presentation. Do you need an app for that? Um, this session uh, is going to consist of uh, some information, but I really wanted to leave everyone with something that they could actually go out and use and create for themselves uh, tomorrow. So. One of the things that you're gonna, uh, we're gonna go through is we're gonna go through some information regarding the app. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time. Uh, I, I kind of dislike presentations where the presenter spends a lot of time on themselves. We're gonna go through some of that, those things, but I really wanna make sure that I give you uh, something that you all can literally use tomorrow uh, for your business, an application that you can use for uh, tomorrow for your business and to generate some additional income, because I think that's that's really important too. So I, I've been thinking about this for a couple of weeks and I wanted to just make sure that I could kind of leave you with something that was gonna be most beneficial. So again, my name is Terry Armstrong and uh, do you need an app for that? That's what this presentation is all about. And um, for this presentation, I, again, I wanna kind of give you some information, uh, who, who am I and why you should listen to me. Uh, I want to make sure that I can provide you with a presentation that you'll get something from. And then lastly, I wanted to do this presentation uh, to make sure that you add something that you could take away from this presentation, because I think that's the part of a presentation that actually adds value is when you can actually take something away and use it uh, for yourself or for your business. 
Again, my name is Terry Armstrong, and uh, I am a full-time full-stack developer. Uh, I've been doing this full-time now for eight years, uh, specifically for myself. Uh, we build websites, uh, native iOS and Android apps, as well as web apps and software for businesses. Uh, I am married. I've been married to my wife, Roxanne, for 23 years. Uh, we have one adult son. I say he's an adult because he's over 21. Uh, he's still in college. Uh, but uh, give him a couple of years and, and we're going to bring him into the business too. Uh, let me cross my fingers. I hope that's what's going to happen. Um, and I am a member, an active member of Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. And I'm the founder of uh, Mo and the president of Mobile Media Plus uh, LLC. Uh, a lot of times people ask me as a developer, what do I do for fun? Uh, and I would say besides coding, uh, spending time with my wife, I love music. Um, and just kind of relaxing and having a good time. But for the most part, uh, I do love the work that I do. And uh, I like, I, I really enjoy the work that I do. So it doesn't seem so much like work. Uh, it's the other aspects of what I do uh, that's more like work. But uh, again, for fun, uh, I love music. And, and um, uh, again, when you all came into the room, the music that you heard, that is from one of my uh, internet radio stations. So um, again, we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, why should you listen to me? Uh, I live in Macon, Georgia, uh, but I've got a, a vast amount of experience in working with some, some, uh, some big newspapers. And again, that's what brought my family and I to Macon, Georgia, uh, as well as with professional individuals and local businesses. Uh, I've been doing that for, for quite some time. I worked for the Chicago Tribune uh, in their marketing and uh, IT departments, as well as the Houston Chronicle. Uh, actually, did win an award from Houston. Uh, we put in, I built uh, what was called an intranet, if you're familiar with that, um, but an intranet, and it, it allowed the newspaper to talk with its distributors, and it made them more efficient, and uh, that was very early on uh, with this whole internet thing starting. So uh, worked for Cox Publishing, and again, worked for a number of years for Knight Ritter uh, and, and a bunch of their different properties, but again, that's what eventually brought me here to Macon, Georgia, my family and I. Uh, I've got eight years of pure marketing and sales development experience. And, and, and I say that because, um, again, working in the, 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 the uh, auto industry, it really does give you a sense of actually how to sell something and the process in which uh, to go about selling. So I'm very thankful for that. But, but again, that was just that's pure sales. Uh, and, and then again, I've got more than 35 years of professional programming experience. Uh, did that right out of college, except for when I thought um, when I first got into this business, I wasn't quite sure uh, if computers was the right thing. Now, keep in mind, that's back in 1989, but wasn't sure if that was the correct uh, field that I should have gone into. But uh, looking back on it now, obviously, it definitely is the right, right uh, uh, field that I should have gone into. Um, what will you get from this presentation? I want to make sure that you get a good understanding of what an app is. Um, I also want to make sure that you have an understanding of why you should consider having an app built for your business uh, or for you as well. And what's the best app for your business as well as what's the main purpose of your app? Um, because people come to me and they ask me all the time about an app, but they don't necessarily uh, hone down what is the main purpose of their app. And I think that's really important because understanding the main purpose of your app uh, is, is really the foundation of why you would want to have an app. So understanding what an app is, um, an app, there are three different basic types of apps. Uh, you've got native apps, you've got web apps, and you've got a hybrid app, and that's a combination of both of them. And, and all of them serve a, a particular purpose. Um, but native apps, are, when you think of a native app, a native app is something that you would use, you would download from uh, the app store, whether it's Android or uh, uh, for your iPhone. That is a native app. It's built specifically for one operating system. And that operating system, you, you cannot cross uh, mesh the two. Uh, when you download it, when you build it for iOS, it's built for iOS. When you build it for Android, uh, or for Windows, um, it's built specifically for that particular operating system. Um, web apps are apps that are uh, that you use on the web. Um, they require uh, an internet uh, interface. 
uh, and it requires uh, it to be connected to the internet at all times. So um, it's really important to understand that web apps uh, uh, definitely have to be connected at all times to the internet, otherwise the user cannot use it. Native apps, uh, and you'll see this later on in the presentation, but native apps have a tendency to store information on the device. And by them storing that information onto the device, uh, it allows uh, your device to access that information a lot quicker. Uh, hybrid apps, uh, hybrid apps are a combination of the two. Uh, the downside with a hybrid app, the biggest downside with a hybrid app is it's, 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 it's much larger. So like I said, we'll get into, get into that uh, as we go through the presentation. And I wanna make sure that, uh, that you understand that there are three basic types of apps. That's the biggest thing that you need to take away from that, this particular slide. Okay, uh, when it comes to native apps, again, as mentioned before, uh, native apps are built specifically for mobile device operating system. And again, um, you cannot with an Android app or an iOS app, uh, you cannot cross the platforms. They are built specifically for just that one platform. You can't mix and match them. Uh, it's built specifically for that. Uh, and, and if you've ever built an app before or been in the process of building an app, you'll also understand that it's much harder to get an app approved with, uh, with Apple than it is with Google. And not that Google, um, not that Google has, uh, uh, it's, it's any less effective. It's just that Apple uh, really scrutinizes and, and they've gotten even more so stringent uh, on um, uh, getting apps put through the system. Uh, there are a lot of apps at one point here a couple years ago uh, that were iPhone or iOS apps and the apps weren't even complete. And so they have, they literally uh, took everybody to the woodshed and said, hey, look, uh, if you're gonna put an app on this on this operating system, it must be complete, uh, no shortcuts, and it's gotta be good quality. So uh, again, a higher standard, uh, just a tad bit higher standard than, than uh, Google, but I think the process with Google is a lot easier because you're more involved than you are with, uh, with Apple. Um, the technologies uh, used in native apps are uh, Java, uh, as you see down at the bottom, uh, uh, Python, Swift, uh, uh, Objective-C, C++, and React. Uh, I have a client that uh, we are finishing up. I think it is her third, third game, fourth game, her fourth game, and this time we decided to build it uh, with React and, um, uh, again, moves a lot faster and a lot smoother. Uh, with React and doesn't take up quite as much space uh, as well. So again, that is, that's, that's a native app, understanding the native apps, okay? Uh, when you get to understanding a web app, uh, web apps, again, behave similar to native apps, but again, they're accessed uh, via web browser uh, on your mobile device. Um, and they don't, uh, again, you don't necessarily download them as you would with a native app. Um, what we do is we install a link on your device, um, which the link is the actual uh, icon that sits on your, uh, on your device, and then it sends you to a particular page uh, on a website. Um, for a lot of clients, and you, you all have, whether, whether you've noticed this or not, uh, a lot of the bigger stores uh, are going to uh, web apps. Um, and it does two things. A native app, again, is a standalone app all by itself. A web app is connected to the website. So when I build a web app for a client, it is sitting on their website. It is connected to their website. So even though a person is utilizing their phone and it looks and feels just like an app, the traffic is actually helping the actual client's website. So keep that in mind that that you know, and again with the web app, you have to be con you have to be connected to the internet um, because it is on the web. So, but but all of the traffic and usage, and I don't care whether it's a game or it is a uh, an application to complete um, uh, to complete some mathematical or calculations, but it is connected to your website. So all the time that someone is utilizing that app. Um, they're actually technically on your website. They're just doing it from a uh, from an app interface. 
Uh, and so that app interface, it allows it to look and feel like an application, uh, like a native app, but it's actually on the web and it's just in a much more concise uh, uh, view. Um, again, the technologies for that, uh, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, and Ruby. Uh, or Ruby. Um, the funny part about when I think about web applications, uh, my son, as he got into uh, computer programming uh, in college, uh, JavaScript is one that he's finding, uh, he found it a little difficult to kind of get into. But once he understood it, um, it makes uh, writing Java a whole lot easier. HTML5, most people are, are familiar with that if you're into programming. But uh, again, uh, the, the concept with a web application, you have to be connected uh, to the internet in order to use that web application. A hybrid app, um, a hybrid app, uh, again, it looks and feels just like a, a native app. Uh, again, you've got the icon that is on your screen. It's got a responsive design. Um, but again, the biggest downside to a hybrid app um, is that it is uh, much heavier because it uses a combination uh, of uh, programming software and technologies uh, in order to function the way that it should. A lot of games uh, you're finding are hybrids. Uh, the reason why those games are hybrids, um, again, it's because uh, you can play a game offline. Um, if you've ever been on a plane uh, and you go into airplane mode, you can still play a game, but it just doesn't connect to the server. So it's contained right there within your, within your device. And because it's contained right there within the device, it just makes it uh, a, a lot more uh, concise and it allows you to play it on an ongoing basis. So, so just keep that in mind. It's a little bit heavier, but again, hybrid apps are very popular and um, they're in constant use, yeah, constantly being used. So um, why should you consider having an app built? Um, that's always one of those things that, um, uh, again, just keep in mind that, that people ask me this question all the time. And it's, you know, uh, again, when a client asks me uh, about having an app built, um, I ask them a number of questions uh, because I want them to understand kind of what they're getting into. But more importantly, I want them to understand uh, the purpose behind having that app built. Um, you have to understand that, that your app has to, to first and foremost, look at how, you know, in terms of the app itself, how is it going to help your, uh, your client, your customer? Um, again, apps typically are used to uh, perform tasks faster. Um, it, does, it does store data uh, locally on the mobile device for quicker access. Um, but again, the most important thing that we're talking about when it comes to uh, why you should consider is because either you want the user experience to improve or you're trying to connect with the user. Um, again, I can send you an email, I can send you a text message, um, and, and all of those things are great, but with a mobile app, I can send you a push notification, and from within that push notification, you can click on it, it's gonna show up on your device uh, just as, as well as a text message will, but the biggest catch is, is that I'm not sending you any place. Once I send you that push notification, it's within the app, and then from within the app, you can go directly to that page. Everybody uses this on a, on a daily basis when you're accessing social media like Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. When somebody sends a message directly to you, uh, that message comes directly to you and then you can interface with it. We're not sending them off to some place. Now you can send a notification that sends people off to some place, but um, the reason why you're trying to connect people, you're building an app, is because you want to connect with your client uh, and have a more responsive way. Plus, if somebody takes the time to download your app, you know that that is a real customer. They believe in what you're doing, whatever it is that you're selling, your product, your service, and you know that they're going to use it uh, on a more on an ongoing basis. So that's what you're really trying to achieve when you consider having an app built. You're really trying to make sure that the folks that uh, uh, that are using your app, those are your real customers and you want them to have a better experience than with a website or uh, uh, just with your notifications. Um, benefits uh, uh, from having an app, uh, businesses that benefit from having an app, uh, restaurants, 
retail store, service businesses, barbershops, beauty salons, and food trucks. Let me tell you, the last three are kind of a pet peeve of mine because barbershops, um, beauty salons really don't understand just how powerful an app can be for their business. Um, uh, you can, again, you can set, schedule appointments with it. Um, you can show your pricing. You can push out your special promotions. You can even push out messaging on your app. But um, in today's world, um, I think people can, and again, I'm not speaking of right this very second because we've got a lot of people that are struggling uh, because of this pandemic. But but when people are scheduling, people will pay more to schedule so that they don't have to wait. And so if you're a barbershop, if you're a service industry uh, that uses scheduling and you have an application, that's going to be somebody that you can push out notifications to. You can fill seats faster when you have cancellations. And if you happen to be doing an event someplace and you push out a notification on your app, and again, I'm not talking about posting on social media. I'm talking about pushing out a notification that goes directly to everyone's phone. When you do that, um, you can direct people in several uh, several different places. But more importantly, you engage with them a little bit more than you would with just a regular email or a text message. And then finally, um, sales professionals. Um, any any sales any sales professional should want to have an app. They should want to have an app of their own. And the reason why they should want to have an app of their own um, is a number of reasons. When a, a, and again, I'm speaking specifically from pure experience. Um, salespeople have a tendency to go to where they can make the most money. And where they make the most money at is with a company today. But tomorrow they may, uh, may be able to make more money with a different company or a different organization. And so one of the things that salespeople uh, don't typically carry with them is a client list. They kind of do have a client list from paperwork sometimes, but they don't have a full client list. So if a sales professional has an app, they take their client list with them wherever it is that they go. And that's the one thing that, I mean, it, it's, it's the beauty of an app is that when you move from one business to the next, you don't drop a beat. You just change the product that you're selling. And that's one of those things that I always find it very fascinating um, that, you know, that you do um, is when you move from one location to the next. So um, something that I just noticed, because I don't use this platform all the time, but I noticed a couple questions and I promise I will get to your questions. I promise you I will get to your questions uh, as we move forward, um, because we're going to have a session uh, where I do do a Q&A. So I just want to acknowledge that I did see some of those questions in there. So again, salespeople uh, definitely, definitely want to have an app. And again, there are different types of app. And, and when you start, uh, a web app is less expensive than a native app. So you start there. And then as you find that it has more, it's driving more business, more sales, then certainly uh, you can actually uh, step up to a native app, but it's not something that you, 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 you'd, you'd have to start with. So just keep that in mind. Okay. All right. What's the best app for my business? Um, and again, people ask me that all the time. Is it a native app or is it a web app? And it really depends uh, on a number of things. It depends on your budget, it depends on the task um, that you're trying to uh, achieve and, and customer usage. Um, the biggest thing, and again, I, you heard me say this before, is the desired customer experience. What are you trying to get? Um, what are you? What are you trying to get? What do you want your customer to experience when they actually have your app? Um, again, when it comes to web application, again, costs. It's great for startups or, or individuals. Um, you, if you want them to complete basic tasks, again, scheduling is a basic task. Uh, basic purchases, whether you have a shopping cart. Um, again, um, and I think I saw this in the question, uh, surveys, those are always good things to have for an app. But again, just keep in mind that everyone that has your app on their device, whether it's a tablet or it's a phone, you know that that, that individual is engaged with your business and you just want to make sure that you provide them with enough information so that they can see the value of it. Again, a banking app, doesn't have to show you the value. 
Um, you already have the built-in value. You want to know how much is in your account right now. Plus, if now, if you want to, and I remember when this first got started, people were so fearful of doing this, but cashing a check with your app. I remember when that first started, it was like, okay, somebody's going to cash the check and then people are going to try to take that check in. And I'm not saying that some, some people didn't do that, but uh, you now, again, banking apps, the usage is built in because it, it, pro it provides you a way to get instant access to your account to move money around. Again, the same way what the website does, the only difference is, is that it's mobile. Your website is not in your car as you're out of town and you don't have, um, you know, you don't have access to a computer. But as long as you've got a, a connection with your phone, that is a way for you to be able to do that. So again, just keep in mind, the app that you get, it really depends on what it is that the experience that you're trying to get your customers uh, to keep up with, how you're trying to provide an experience for them, as well as a business, what are you trying to get them to do? If it's easier for them to purchase through your app than it would be for your website, or if you didn't have a website, then that is, that's important. If it's about obtaining information, then yes, that's important. Again, anything that's going to improve the consumer experience, that's what you really want your app to do. Again, a native app, if you wanted to have more complex tasks uh, while people are on the go, uh, more uh, audio visual streaming, and then uh, more sensitive calculations, then those are all good uh, for native apps because, again, they can be very intuitive and they can connect with a lot of databases, uh, specifically uh, through APIs and things of that nature. Okay. All right. Uh, as we're moving on, um, what's the main purpose of an app, again, as I mentioned before, it depends on the type of business, uh, the desired customer experience with your app, and uh, how will it grow your business? Um, again, anytime we're talking about adding, whether it's software or we're talking about an app, it's extremely important uh, for you to understand, you know, what is it, how's it gonna help your bottom line? Because as a business person, you want it to help your bottom line as a, consumer, you want it to improve your experience with that particular business. Um, again, because people are on the move, um, that is really the purpose of the app. And, and that's what you have to remember. That is the main purpose for your app. What type of business do you have? What type of experience you want your customer to have? And then how will it help you to grow your business? Um, I have a number of people that actually have apps but they don't use them in a way that's going to be that's helpful to grow their business. They use it in a way to gather new customers and their customers have a good experience. But again, they're not using it in a way that can grow their business. And that for a business owner, that's really the bottom line. How can I grow my business uh, with this uh, with this particular, you know, with this app that I'm having built? OK, um, again, as I mentioned, I wanted you to get. Um, what you can take away from the presentation, I wanted you to have a, a, a really a good understanding of what an app is. And I hope I've given you that as an overview. I tried really, really hard um, not to geek out on this stuff because it's really easy for me to do uh, as a developer. Um, so I wanted to keep it light uh, and make sure that, you know, you had something. So I hope that gives you a better understanding of, of the purpose of an app and why you would want uh, to have an app built for, for your business. Um, again, for me, it's all about what can I, how is it going to help my business right now? Again, and I'm going to talk about the day that you start having it built. I'm talking about immediately after it's completed and it's been approved and it's actually working. That's, um, that's the thing that you want to make sure. So that's what I wanted you to take away from this uh, from this presentation. Um, but uh, again, and I have to be honest, I, I tried very hard to hold this in, but I also wanted to help you to build something that um, uh, that you could use right now. Um, it, it's important. I mean, there are all types of apps that are out there. Uh, some of these, some of you all may have heard of uh, what we're getting ready to do, but some people uh, have not. But I talk to enough people when it comes to startup businesses and micro entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of how stay at home businesses, how you can work um, uh, with applications to actually help you 
uh, you know, grow your business. So today what we're actually going to do is we're going to build a, a phone app. Um, and some of you have made a, you may have heard of Grasshopper. Uh, some of you have Google Voice uh, numbers and things of that nature. But I wanted to uh, help you to build a, a, a simple app. Um, but it's an app that is very, it, it's, it's very usable. Um, I use them every day. Um, and then for businesses, I want you to be able to use the same app to help you to track the success of your marketing campaigns, uh, which can also be very helpful. Um, people need more when you have, in, in today's world, uh, growing up as a kid, I had a home phone and then eventually you had a, a business phone and then came along the mobile phone and then you eliminated your uh, your home phone and now you have a mobile phone and you're starting your business, but I don't necessarily want to give out my personal number. And so uh, uh, in doing that, I thought that if we built an app that you would give you a second phone number uh, that only charges you whenever it is used uh, with the exception of the phone number and would allow you to uh, uh, put your business out there with a different number than your personal cell phone number, but that it would also ring to your cell phone number. So that's the, that's the beauty. And, and again, um, this is not about any services that we sell. Um, this is, uh, I want to make sure that I could provide you with something that you all could actually go out and do. And we're going to do this live right here um, and build it. And, and all you actually, I'm going to go slow enough to where you can follow the screenshots and uh, you can take screenshots or pictures with your phone or however you're going to do this. But I wanted to make sure that that we were doing this um, uh, so that you, it's something that you can actually use. OK, we're going to use a service. If you all are not familiar with Twilio, we're going to use a service called Twilio to set up this app. And again, I'm not going to go through the setup process of of uh, setting up a Twilio account. I'm just going to log into my current Twilio account. But I will tell you, the one thing about Twilio is, is that um, you can get started with $20. And that $20 will, again, depending upon how you use it, um, I will tell you that if you want a local phone number, a local phone number will cost you a dollar per phone number. And uh, if you want an 800 number, the 800 phone numbers will cost you $2. Again, that's a dollar per month and $2 per month. So depending upon whether you want 800 numbers or you want a, a local number, uh, again, a dollar per month uh, for a local number and $2 per month for a uh, for a 800 number uh, cost wise you're going to pay less than a penny per minute for phone calls and you will pay less than a penny per text message inbound and outbound so again um, that's a that's a one reason why i like twilio and i built a number of applications that work with twilio so uh, again i wanted to to give you an idea of what we were actually going to do uh, with this. So you'll be able to see it for yourself. So you're going to get yourself a, a number, whether it's a local number or an 800 number, and uh, somebody's going to call that phone number. That phone number is then going to connect with Twilio. From Twilio, it's going to connect with your uh, the app that we're going to build inside of Twilio, and then it's going to ring to your phone. And it's just that simple. But again, imagine having a phone number that you can actually put out there for marketing purposes that people can use. And when they call that number, it's going to ring directly to your phone. And then you'll actually be able to pick up that phone and will be able to answer the call. Again, if somebody calls you and you're in business for yourself, uh, nine times out of 10, if I call a customer back and I call them from my cell phone, um, it's no big deal because I know that that's business. It's not somebody that's just actually out playing. So I don't have a problem with calling customers back or calling individuals that call me to inquire. I just want to know that that's what those individuals are, are actually doing. Okay. That they're actually calling me about, about business. So um, let me take, before we get into this, we'll get into some other questions. And do you have any experience working with Linux based apps? Uh, what feedback do you have concerning uh, apps based on a Linux operating system. I don't build very many apps, uh, Deborah, uh, on Linux. Uh, I just don't. Uh, it's just not something that I, I've had a whole lot of experience with uh, uh, working uh, 
uh, with for customers. Uh, most people, when they are asking for an app, um, I just and I typically build them uh, general, generally web browser based apps or I build those native apps. So yeah, I don't have a whole lot of experience uh, with building those. Uh, do you recommend using an app for satisfaction service? Um, yes. Um, I think an app for a satisfaction survey is a great way to get feedback. Again, whether it's a native app or it is a, um, uh, whether it's a native app or it is a, uh, 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 an, a web app, either one, you can actually build a survey. Anytime you can build something that's going to give you feedback, um, I think that is a very good thing, specifically feedback from uh, from the customers that you currently have uh, or are potential customers that you're trying to get. So, yeah, I think surveys are always very good uh, when you're, you're trying to, you know, trying to do that. So, so I'm going to change, I'm going to stop sharing one screen and, and going to go into sharing another screen. So give me one second here as I do that. I don't see any other questions in there just yet. Let me see. Uh, let me change, move the screen over here so that you all can see that. And then I'm going to pick that screen. Okay. So, so the screen that you're currently looking at is inside of, um, it is actually inside of my Twilio account. And uh, when I tell you I have a lot of numbers, I have a lot of numbers um, because uh, not only are they just, they're not necessarily all for me, but um, the numbers that I actually have in the system um, are for my clients, but we're going to use this one right here. We're going to use that number, and this is the number that we're going to set up, and, and, and you'll hear it ring to the phone here in just a few moments, but um, inside of Twilio, they have this, uh, and again, if once you get logged in, if you're not familiar with Twilio, you kind of have to click over here, and it gives you all of the different uh, program options that you have, and so, again, I'm not going to get all into a bunch of these, but they've got debuggers and those are great. Uh, debuggers are absolutely fantastic for when you want to figure out what's going on with an app and why it's not working the way that you would like for it to work. But um, uh, we're going to go into Twilio Studio. And inside of Twilio Studio, this is where you build a call flow. And inside of Twilio Studio, um, you know, again, you can call it whatever you want to, um, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to say that this is the making startup call flow. Okay. Making startup call flow. And once you do that, you've got a different types of apps that you can build inside a call flow. You've got an appointment reminder. You've got messaging with the chat bots and you all are familiar with chat bots. Um, because you see them on Facebook. Uh, again, uh, Deborah, you had asked about a survey. Uh, here's a text survey that you can actually do and messaging uh, autoresponder. Um, so there's a number of things you could do, call forwarding, call routing, uh, customer support. Again, there's a number of things, but we're going to just build this from scratch just so that you all can see exactly how we do this. So if you all are taking screenshots, I hope you are. Uh, again, because this is something that I think this is really fantastic the way that this works. And so let me minimize this right here. So our call flow is, is that we're going to have, a, we've got our phone number and we want, when people call that number, we want them to ring to our phone. Um, over here is the widgets library. And as you can see, there's all types of, of, of flows that you can actually do from text messaging to, uh, I mean, there's a, there's just a number of things. So uh, again, I need to stay on task because again, I get in here and start to plan around with things and there's all types of things that you could do. So right here, let's just say we're going to connect a call. So we're just going to drag that connect a call right in here. That's all we're going to do is we're just going to drag it in here and then we're going to take the trigger right here and we're just going to connect that trigger to this right here. Okay. So when a call comes in, it's going to connect to our call. It's going to connect the caller directly to wherever we want them to go. Okay. And so once I click on it and highlight it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, here's a couple of options. You could put multiple numbers in here. You can put a, a conference call so that you could actually have a conference call with folks, but we're just going to ring to a single phone number. And I'm just going to put this phone number in here. 
Okay. And, and, and again, if you follow this down, the caller ID that's actually in here, I could either leave that. It's going to show the 800 or it's going to show whatever number that the person is calling from. It's going to show them that right inside of here. Do I want to record a call? I can, or I don't have to. If I, if you do record a call, just keep in mind that, uh, you know, you got to be careful of what state you're actually in, um, you know, that sort of thing. So just, just bear that in mind. So, um, but again, for the caller ID, if I want to change it to call this Macon Startup Week, all I'd actually have to do, I could actually take this out, okay? And I could put Macon Startup Week uh, call. I could put it right in here. So when the caller ID shows, it's actually gonna show Macon Startup Week. In fact, I'm gonna take out the word call. Just Macon Startup Week, that's what's actually gonna show in the caller ID, okay? And then uh, again, the timeout ring is 30 seconds. And again, this is before it hits voicemail, but I'm just gonna save this because this is what's gonna happen. Now that I've saved it and I'm gonna publish it. So you have to remember that once you have your, once you set it up, you've got your, your trigger, a phone call comes in, and then I'm gonna save that number to the call. Once I connect uh, to my call, I'm gonna save it. Once I save it, then I'm gonna publish it. Okay, don't really care about the revisions, but I'm going to save that. So now that that's actually been saved, I can go back to my number. Okay, and here's my here's my number right in here. You'll see it. I'm going to open up that specific number. Once I go into that number and here it is, when a call comes in, a call comes in. What is it that you want it to do? So remember, this over here is called studio. OK, and so we want to connect it to Studio Flow. So we've got the Studio Flow in here and now I'm going to select my flow. Here's my flow making startup call flow. OK, now that I'm going to save that number. OK. Now that it's been saved again, all I actually have to do again, um, I've got my one phone here. So let me let me come out of sharing this because I, I really want you all to, to see this, okay? So so from this, from my one phone, and I'm gonna, let me turn my ringer on. So from my one phone, I'm gonna call this number, okay? And the number that I actually had up there is 901-509-9500. Hang on one, oops, hang on one second. Okay, 901. 509-9500. Okay. So, so you can see that I've got the phone number in there and I'm going to call it. And once it calls, it's, it's a Tennessee call and it's going to call this number. A number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. I did dial it right. Five Hang on one second. Let's go back. 901-509-901-509-9500. That is a number. You have reached a number that has been disconnected. Okay. So, so, so you know how this works, right? <laughs> Hang on one second. So anytime you try to do it live, let's see. So we have the number 901-509. Make a startup. We call flow. Let me go back to Sharon just so you can see what I'm looking at. Here's the call flow. Incoming call, call and we connect it to the phone number. Maybe I need to reset that number. Is that what I need to do? Reset the number. So, and again, this is how, this is how call flows work. And again, like anything else technology wise, sometimes you just kind of have to 
you have to play with them and make sure they work. 901, so we've got the call flow. That is a current number. It's currently handled by that web flow. Yeah, so we have it right. Let me try it one more time. Not really sure why it didn't didn't do what it's supposed to. 101-509-9500. We're sorry. You have reached a Okay. So um, didn't quite work as well as I wanted it to. Um, a, a lot of times, let's see, maybe if I buy a number, let's let's do that. Because I want to make sure that this works for you. I want you all to see this. So we're gonna we're just gonna start out brand new with a brand new number. We're gonna buy a number. Okay. And we're gonna search again. This and this is really how you do it. You search for a number. So I'm gonna search for a 478 number, see if I can find one. Uh, okay, I'm going to search for a number. Let's see if we can find something. A making number. There's a make. There's an. Okay, it's a Georgia number. So we'll start with that. Okay. Yeah, we're going to buy that number. And again, when you purchase a number inside of, uh, again inside of uh, inside of this, uh, all your information's right here. So we're going to turn around and we're going to do Studio Flow. And we're going to select this right here. We're going to select that number. We've saved the number. Okay. And we're going to dial this number again. We're going to dial a different number. 375 You have reached a number that has been disconnected or okay. is no longer in service. All right. So they must be having an issue on their end uh, because once you set up these numbers, yeah, once you set up these numbers, they should work. So, uh, again, you know, it, this, this, you know, it can happen from time to time. But, again, I want you to understand that, that get yourself a Twilio number set them up. And then once you set them up, our business number runs through Twilio. Uh, we've got 800 numbers that they run through Twilio. And um, so again, it's one of those, this just happens to be the day that um, I guess Twilio decided that it didn't, didn't want to work the way that I, that I wanted it to work. So um, again, I just, I, I want to go back and, and, and kind of finish uh, sharing this with you. So I, I hope that you got something out of, uh, out of this. And, uh, again, there's a bunch of different types of applications that you can use. I just want you to remember, it really just depends on your business, on what it is that you are trying to get out of utilizing the application, uh, for your business and, and what is that customer experience going to be, uh, when you do that. So, um, if anybody has any questions, you can certainly, I'm going to be here for a while, so you can certainly uh, type it in and, um, uh, you know, I can answer those questions for you. But again, just consider that when you are looking to have an app built, uh, you just want to make sure that it's something that's going to help move your business forward and it's going to improve your customer experience. Because again, that that really is the key for any app is how can I improve my customer experience and how is it going to help me to grow my business? Um, those are probably the most important things that um, that I would say when it comes to uh, building an app. Um, there are all, all sorts of apps um, that you can build, again, obviously for games, uh, tools and usage. Um, I mean, you know, there's all sorts of apps that you can build. Again, bottom line is you just want to make sure that um, – that the apps that you build are going to uh, benefit you as well as benefit your your, your customers. So um, I hope you got something out of this presentation. Uh, lastly, I wanted to leave you with my contact information. So if someone wants to contact me for additional questions, again, I talk to customers all the time. I talk to potential customers all the time. Um, but more importantly, I want to make sure that, um, you know, if, if you have a question regarding an app that I can answer that question for you. Um, again, if you have an, a question regarding 
uh, a website or an application or software, I can answer those questions for you. But again, that's my contact information. Um, today is kind of a, a big day for me uh, because if you follow me online, uh, you know that we've had a new facility uh, built, uh, completed. Uh, we did a renovation of a, of a building. And today is actually the very, very first day that I'm actually working in my new office. So, um, but in our new facility, we're going to have, uh, we're going to be able to uh, provide customers with uh, a lot more experience than um, uh, uh, software, as well as applications and websites. We're going to do a little bit better because we're going to bring some other staff members in uh, here locally uh, in middle Georgia to be able to support uh, the things that, that our customers uh, or potential customers are wanting. So if anybody has any questions, um, I'd be more than happy to answer those questions for you. This would be a good time uh, for us to do that. I'm going to stick around for another nine minutes or so uh, just to make sure that I can answer any questions that people have, uh, you know, regarding, uh, you know, apps or websites or whatever. Uh, again, I, I want to thank uh, the folks at Making Startup Week for uh, inviting me to do this presentation. Uh, this was a lot of fun uh, doing the presentation with the exception of uh, whatever's going on. The Twilio is, is uh, uh, kind of stopped us from, from working that angle. But uh, uh, other besides that, I, I appreciate uh, I appreciate you all allowing me to be here and um, uh, uh, do this presentation. So the average cost of a web app or a hybrid app. So uh, web apps, um, uh, and again, I can't speak for every other developer, um, but I can tell you that uh, most of our web apps uh, range, and again, our, a standard web app that we would do uh, for most of our clients run about $1,000. Uh, hybrid apps uh, can run anywhere from uh, $3,000 to you know $100,000. It just depends on uh, what you're trying to do. Uh, I have a uh, client now that I'm working with and they are trying to develop an app uh, that connects um, uh, children with uh, information. And when I say children with information, I really mean parents and their children with information uh, regarding uh, their schools. And so that is a hybrid app. And the, uh, the app that we're um, and this is not the final product, but a functioning developmental app uh, is going to cost them roughly about $10,000. That is the developmental app uh, so that they can show, uh, they can go out and present it to uh, schools and to parents and uh, see if it's something that, that they are, you know, want to move forward with. So it just depends on the app. Again, that's, that's part of research and development. Um, so, like I said, it really just depends on the on the app itself and what it is that you're trying to uh, what it is you're trying to uh, you're trying to build. So, uh, uh, some of you are, are if you're thinking about uh, having an app built, um, I will tell you that if you're if you're talking about an app such as um, uh, Grubhub or um, uh, any of these eatery apps that are actually out there uh, on the top end, uh, you're talking about um, an application that's probably going to run you about seventy-five to one hundred thousand um, dollars, and it really depends. Uh, Uber app, uh, the Uber app itself, uh, you have to remember you've got two different apps uh, with the Uber app, uh, and those Uber type apps you have the driver app. And then you also have the consumer app. And then those two apps have to talk to each other because when the consumer app says, hey, look, I want to ride, it has to talk to the driver app and it has to say, who's the closest? They've got somebody that's here. And so um, uh, with all of that being said, um, and then there's a third app, uh, which is a web-based app that connects all of those two together so that it can be uh, monitored and measured uh, by the company. So um, those are fairly expensive apps. They take a long time to develop um, because there's a lot of interaction going back and forth uh, between consumer and the business. 
Um, but most standard, uh, uh, and again, I hate to use the word retail, but most standard uh, local businesses, you could probably get away with an app for anywhere from $2,500 to about $5,000. Uh, for an app. Again, it just depends on the functionality that you are trying to, to do. Um, one of the things that I've found is that most people make the process of wanting an app more complicated. And so typically, once I break down uh, what the app can actually do, I'm answering your questions. But more importantly, what I'm actually doing is I'm just showing that it's not as complex. And again, it's the same thing with websites. Um, it's not as complex. And you want that flow because in most instances, people are trying to click less uh, as opposed to trying to click more. And sometimes as consumers, uh, when we think or as business owners, we make things more complicated uh, than what we actually should. Um, what sort of uh, uh, functions have a tendency to drive up costs? Um, <laughs> um, there's a number of different functions, but I would say the one that that has a tendency to drive up costs more are the functions where you are connecting with other APIs. Um, everybody's API is not free, um, and some APIs are more expensive uh, to connect with than other APIs, uh, specifically when you are talking about um, uh, data or um, geofencing, uh, things that uh, or allow you to connect with other services, uh, those have a tendency to drive uh, drive up the cost uh, of an app. Um, because again, you're talking about interfacing uh, uh, with two different, uh, two different entities. Um, I had a, a client and, and for, uh, and this is, this has been a long time ago. So, but it was a, it was a furniture company um, they wanted to have an app that, um, if, if you all are familiar with uh, what's called a waterfall system, uh, uh, so again, a person applies for credit, and then you typically, what you want to do is you want to match up that client with someone that can uh, fund or loan them the money for their business. But a waterfall system, what it does is, is that a person applies for something, and then you want it to go through a series of, of lenders, but you want it to go to the best lender and then the second best lender, the third best lender. So it, they, they call it a waterfall system. Um, so that app was extremely tricky and extremely expensive because in order to send the application to that business, um, you have to interface with their data with their systems and all those systems are different and most of the time um, the schematic that they give you or the uh, the interface information that they give you is very vague um, for the uh, businesses that they want to do business with they make it very easy but if you're coming in and you've never done business with them before um, they have a tendency to uh, keep that information extremely vague and um, so uh, so anytime you're interacting uh, with other entities that certainly, because again, in most instances, you're having to write custom code in order to interface with that, uh, with those other entities. So um, I hope this has been very helpful uh, in terms of answering questions. And again, I apologize for um, uh, for Twilio not working the way that we want it to. But again, if you have questions, if you'd like to do that, um, you know, if you give me a call and you say, hey, look, I was on making startup week and we couldn't get, you couldn't get that to work. Um, you know, give me a call. There's my contact information on the screen and we'll schedule a Zoom meeting and I'll kind of walk you through that. Again, I'm not going to charge you to do those things, but I will walk you through that process um, because, again, I think Twilio is uh, absolutely an outstanding uh, way to uh, utilize phone numbers to connect with your business. And uh, it, it keeps you from having to put uh, your information uh, actually out there. Um, you know, for your, your phone number out there for everybody to see, you can put a tracking number. And if you start getting spam calls from that, you can delete it uh, and, and, and get yourself another number and connect it to your phone. Uh, more importantly, I will tell you that um, uh, finally, one of the ways that I use uh, those numbers with our clients is we use them for marketing. So if you're 
<clears throat> running a campaign on the radio station, TV, and then in the newspaper, you put a different tracking number for each one so that you know when a call comes in uh, and it comes in from that particular number, you know that that came from the newspaper, it came from the television uh, or radio station or wherever, and it allows you as a business person to track uh, the type of response you're getting. And so if you can track the type of response that you get uh, from uh, from your marketing, uh, it, also, it actually helps you to hone in on your marketing and uh, allows you to eliminate um, things that, you know, that just don't, uh, that don't make sense. So um, again, I, I want to thank everybody uh, and, and I appreciate your questions. Again, uh, thank you to Making Startup Week for having me. Um, but again, uh, if you have any questions, my contact information is on the screen and, um, uh, you know, you can certainly contact me uh, in my office. Thank you.